Hey everyone, in today's video, we look at something that was literally found on the side of the road. This is a Magnavox stereo console. It's got a radio tuner inside of it, it's got a record player, and it's got a cat on it too, I guess. A friend of ours found this on the side of the road and couldn't help themselves, they just had to have it. So they loaded it into their car, took it home, tested it out, and noticed that uh, it wasn't working quite right. So they got a hold of me and said, hey, can you take a look at this thing? And I said, absolutely. So here it is. I have not plugged this thing in. I do not know what it does or what's wrong with it. And uh, we're going to find out in this video and hopefully fix it as well. So let's go. So let's take a look at this thing. It's actually in quite remarkable condition. It's there's not many scratches on it. There's not any tears in the uh, the speaker grills. And there it is. Magnavox. Right there. Up top we have some covers that we can kind of play around with. We've got this one right here. Open it up. There's the record player and the radio. Stereo. High fidelity. Only the highest of fidelity for the Magnavox console. Looks like we've got FM and AM radio in here. So that's pretty cool. Then we've got the record player. So what's really interesting about this is most of the time when I see these things they do not have a cartridge and needle on the arm. But this one, it does. There it is. But what's the most interesting of all is if we go to the other side here. This is where you would keep your records. You've got your little divider right there. But inside of this, and remember this was found on the side of the road. It was going to be thrown away. This is the original Magnavox user manual for this thing, which is just so awesome. What do you think, Sadie? Are you going to go inside? She fits! She fits inside. Can you believe it? Do you want to read the manual to us? Okay, fine. I'll read it to us instead. Now, I've known that this is here, but I haven't actually read through it. So, let's see what we've got here. We've got a, a welcome message. Yes, you can see it. This is a custom-built instrument of the finest quality providing you with the ultimate in stereophonic high-fidelity reproduction. Music becomes magic when the glorious voice of Magnavox sets it free. Now, we've got solid state here. I was kind of hoping this would be a vacuum tube one because, you know, vacuum tubes are kind of cool, but this is solid state which is uh, good and bad. It means you don't have to dink with tubes. I mean, in the 60s, late 60s, anything that was solid state was kind of a big deal because, you know, you didn't have to mess around with the tubes. See? There it is. The, the advanced reliability of this new development is startling. The usual industry guarantee for parts and tubes is only 90 days. Now, this is guaranteed for five years. So, yeah. I was just talking off of my head and then I looked at this and, yeah, it turns out I'm right. What do we got next? So here's our controls. All this fun stuff. How to operate your Micromatic record player. Ooh! Accessories. The adapter. We have the Astrosonic warranty. And we have a uh, certificate. So we can, you know, turn this in and get things for having this. And the back of the user manual. Just uh diamond stylus certificate Fort Wayne Indiana I've been there it's okay also real briefly in the back we've got some connections here looks like we have some connections for external speakers and it looks like we have a uh, tape or maybe that's an auxiliary input but look at that we will uh, take a look and see what's going on there apparently there are no user serviceable parts inside so it needs to be uh, referred to a qualified service professional. I don't know, am I qualified? Or am I just stupid? Let's see. Let's open this back up. Let's see how you uh, turn it on. Looks like we're in phono, so let's go to FM. PayPal or e gift card for Amazon oh. and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code there you go. for a 20 on your first take. So, there's your volume. And then we've got uh, tuning. Metallica. Well, that's pretty neat. 
Um, I will note one thing though. I only hear sound out of this side. I do not hear anything at all out of this side. So that's one thing to look at immediately. It could just be a dirty control. That's oftentimes what that is. I'm going to go get a record I don't really care about and uh, put it on that turntable and see what happens. Alright, we've got our first issue. Um, so I went upstairs to go find a record. I chose this one, Accordion Hits, the uh, Dollar Rack Special. But we can hear some AC hum on the left channel. And we heard some crackling as well. So sounds like we've probably got some noisy transistors and maybe even some capacitors that are not filtering out the uh, 60 Hertz here in North America. But let's not let that stop us from continuing to play around with this thing. Honestly, that one side sounds pretty okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, AC hum went away. Don't know what that's about. All right. Let's try out the record player portion of this thing. Let's see if this thing even turns on in the first place. Let's turn it on. It, uh, it spins. It's getting up to speed here. Okay. Let's do that, and then let's place it on here. The record player works. Alright, so we see that this thing is mostly functional. The record player works. We've got uh, stereo FM working. Um, I haven't tested AM, but I don't really care too much about that. I think it's time to take the back cover off of this and see why that right channel is not working. And why we were getting that weird AC hum and that weird crackling earlier. So, let's see what's going on inside of this thing. Let's get the back cover off and uh, see what we find. see we've got a horn right here, a wolf around the side. This thing has an integrated FM antenna which is kind of cool. So you see those two posts right there? Kind of goes around and then it gets stapled to the wood right here. Kind of comes up along it and then we split off. We've got one thing going that way and one thing going that way. So that's pretty cool for an FM antenna. Inside of here we've got what appears to be a little schematic. So that's pretty neat. Uh, maybe that'll be helpful for me later. I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out. We've got a woofer on the side and a horn in front facing diagonally. We've got the same thing happening over here. On this side we can see a little speaker crossover network right here, so that's pretty cool. Right here we've got our four output transistors, little TO3s. Then inside of here we've got uh, board and things. Uh, this is what's kind of coming up and where the, the controls are, like that. Then underneath here we can see all the innards of the record player. We gotta figure out, why are we not getting any sound out of the right channel? These two right here. So, I'm thinking the issue is somewhere in here, the amp board. I think we're gonna have to get this thing out and uh, see what's going on. So I just got done doing some troubleshooting off camera. I had my phone hooked up to it, was listening through here. What I noticed is that when I was just kind of touching these output transistors to see if any of them were hot, one of them was actually a lot hotter than the others. So that prompted me to remove the hot one and uh, try swapping in a good one. And after some interesting trial and error, long story short, both channels are working now. I'll show you, even though you can't hear it. Switch to the radio. So there it goes. But, okay, so it's warmed up now. I had it playing a little bit louder. And if I turn it on, you can see it sounds like uh, absolute garbage. We've got kind of a feedback loop going here. If I switch it off of FM, it's still there. And now we've got a nice AC hum. But, watch this. If I touch it, it goes away. I'm going to jiggle this around and let's take a listen. I can induce that feedback loop. 
put this in just the right position. And then cut it out when it's in the right position also. But what I think is happening here is we've got some bad connections between the output transistors and the amplifier board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this whole thing out of here, which it looks like it's going to be pretty easy. It looks like three screws and uh, some wire connectors. We'll get this out of here. We'll make sure these connections to the outputs are really good. And we're also going to check out the capacitors because, you know, this is obviously about 50 years old, maybe more. And there's definitely going to be a leaking capacitor or two on here, just given the age. here. Part of a puzzle. So, I wonder how much time somebody spent looking for this puzzle piece. Here it is all these years later. So we've got this thing on the bench here and uh, you know just looking at it there's really not that much I see on here that is uh, like glaringly wrong per se. Um, We've got a few capacitors around here. I don't see any like fluid on the bottom. I don't see any of them bulging. Um, maybe this one right here a little bit, but I think that goes to the tuner and the tuner was working fine. So I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, the only thing I really noticed is, uh, if you remember, we were having some issues with the outputs. We had some weird activity going on there. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on this. I noticed something a little interesting. You can see it right there. That is a cold solder joint or a broken solder joint. And if we move this way a little bit, we see that this one is a little sketchy looking as well. Um, not sure we're going to be having continuity to the traces. So I think the first thing that I will do with this is just reflow those solder joints and make sure that uh, we're in okay shape right there. So I am very tempted right now to just go ahead and start recapping this thing, but now that I've taken care of those solder joints, the next thing I want to do is just focus on you know what we saw earlier. I want to take out all these outputs right here. I want to clean the terminals on them, the connectors, uh, put down new thermal compound, make sure we've got good insulation between the case and uh, the heat sink. And uh, after that, I'll clean the controls with deoxit. Well, I guess I'll do that now actually. And then once that's all taken care of, I will put it back in the unit and we'll see if we find any uh, difference in what's going on with it. So what just happened is we replaced all the mica insulators on the outputs. We added new thermal compound, good old Dow 340 right here. We reflowed all of the solder joints for the outputs and the heat sink that they're attached to. So now I think it's time to get this thing back inside of the console and see if it works any better before we try changing caps or anything. Well folks, I've been listening to this thing for about half an hour now and uh, it's working freaking fantastic. 
As you can see, we've got a uh, walk through the park running through to the back. Got it on aux. And uh, I was listening to a lot of stuff at basically max volume. Um, I think there's some resistors on the aux thing, so you can't turn aux up too loud. So even at max volume, it's not too bad. I'll show you. You know, reasonable. Not terribly loud. But yeah, you can see it's working. If you switch to FM, it's going to be a lot louder. That is 7.1. That is 7.1. My cousin Tim is like a brother to me. He's like a brother to him. Anyhow, a bottle to burn your fat. Here's what you burn didn't all know. your fat. Uh, I love FM radio ads, but yeah, here it is. Um, I'm gonna wrap this thing up because it is working, and there are a lot of other projects to get to here. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you found this video interesting. There will be plenty more like it coming up here. I've got lots of uh, stereo things to take a look at and fix, so. Thanks again. I will see you in the next one. So, uh, am I qualified now? I did not get shocked, and I did not uh, surface any parts, but, I mean, I guess I replaced the mic insulators, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm qualified. I'll, I'm going to give it to myself.